Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular <clears throat> meeting of the Board of Selectmen. First thing is approval of the minutes of June 7th. Is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Thank you, John. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> okay, next is communications. Uh, one quick communications of the highway department uh, installed uh, wooden uh, railings on the upper railing of the Cogswell Bridge today uh, in, in accordance to our understanding. And thanks to Duke Pozzozzi for donating the locally uh, milled timber to go into the wooden rails. And again, thanks Duke for that. Thanks the crew for putting it in. Looks good. Uh, and uh, point of interest is that Duke's great grandfather, or no, great uncle uh, was the engineer on the bridge in the 1930s. So sort wow. of interesting little history comes, comes together again in, uh, 90 years later. So anyway, those are up uh, for your inspection, um, enjoyment. Town is not responsible for anybody who sits on them and gets splinters, but <laughs> should, uh, any other communications? Okay, so next addition to the agenda, I have uh, two um, fiber optics uh, optimum Altis is first and second one is request of the Agricultural Committee for bottle deposits. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Um, yes, Jen. Yes. So uh, just a quick healthcare, uh, mobile healthcare update. Okay. <clears throat> okay, healthcare. Okay, so we have three. Uh, Additions. So, uh, so you're second to adding those three. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, let's see. <laughs> Next, we have housing update. Uh, the housing plan implementation group is uh, continuing to meet and make recommendations. Uh, I have sent you some of the materials that was prepared for them by the Center for Housing Opportunities of Litchfield County, uh, talking about housing um, and community uh, funds that can be established by communities. They looked at uh, ordinances and funds that were set up in Salisbury, Washington, Goshen. Seems like um, the one in Salisbury is the most applicable to what we have here in Cornwall. Uh, so as this is a top priority for the town, I would like the board to send this information off to attorney, town attorney Pearly Grimes to have him craft an ordinance so we could get a housing fund set up here that either people can donate to or uh, the town could even make appropriations to or get grants or whatever. Seems like this has been our top priority issue uh, the housing situation hasn't gotten any better in the last year. Um, and this is a tool that's been used in other towns to help um, implement some housing options. So is there a motion to send this uh, background information, including the Salisbury ordinance to um, attorney Pearly Grimes to draft up a Cornwall appropriate ordinance? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Uh, second out there. I moved. Okay. Any discussion on that? Um, mm -hmm. There are other things that are going on also, but it seemed like this is one of the goals of the housing plan is to get a, a local fund together where fundraising can happen to make some things happen. So any more discussion on this idea of sending it off and actually getting at some point a future town, putting this in front of a future town meeting? <laughs> Okay, so all those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, other projects the housing group is working on is uh, housing uh, advocate. Heather has gotten some people are volunteering to work as a housing advocate to help people that are having housing issues in town or want to move to town. Um, her caseload's pretty busy and having a specialist on this would be good. This time it looks like a volunteer uh, position and she has had some interest so that will be coming in front of us at some point. Um, as will hopefully a ARPA uh, fund request to uh, do some site development for the Coral Housing Corporation. They do have some lots that they are they could develop um, with more funds. And I believe Morris and uh, Warren have used some of their ARPA money for similar site development projects. Um, another project they have ongoing is a regional look at state properties. You have some of that. So the state owns thousands of acres in town. And is, it, is, there, are the, is there land that could be appropriate for housing? Uh, just a very small percentage of that we could make a big difference to the town. So we'll be looking at that as well as the issue of accessory dwelling units. Planning Zoning Commission did vote at their meeting last week to opt out of the state guidance with the idea that Cornwall is already more uh, encouraging of accessory dwelling units than the state uh, minimum requirements. And they hope to do more as far as making it more uh, possible for more units uh, in town. So again, that's a key part of the strategy. Uh, again, uh, none of these things would cost necessarily the town a great deal of money, but could have a positive impact on what we feel is a top priority for the town. So we'll keep in the loop of uh, the housing task force. Next meeting is uh, Monday afternoon, 27th at four o'clock. Uh, any other thoughts on housing updates? Okay, thank you for your support. Um, let's see, uh, next item is uh, town meeting. It's coming up uh, this Saturday night, 7.30 at the school. Um, Residents are reminded that there will not be any vote at that meeting. This, this uh, the only thing on the agenda is debating uh, the referendum question, which will be should the town um, spend money to put in a wastewater management system in West Cornwall. Uh, there will be no uh, vote at that particular meeting, but there will be um, plenty of opportunity for people to uh, speak, have an exchange of ideas, and uh, discuss uh, the issue as it um, <clears throat> as they might. Um, so that's seven thirty at the school, and again the referendum vote is on July 9th at uh, seven. No, I'm sorry, from twelve noon to eight o'clock at town hall, and absentee ballots are available and are being issued by the town clerk uh, this week. So call Vera if you need an absentee ballot because you, you're eligible to vote but will not be in town. So the actual vote again is July 9th. The town meeting for discussion and debate is on July 25th. Okay, so anything else on that from the board? Those two issues? Oh, quick yes, question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that won't be available via Zoom. Is it just in person only? It's just in person only. The school is not does not have Zoom capacity at this point. Uh, might we be able to stream it some other way? Uh, we could look at that. Um, I think Richard's going to take a video of it and see if we can broadcast it live. We might be able to do it via Facebook Live. So I will leave that to Richard and you to try to set up if there's an alternate way to to do that. I know other town meetings have found it hard to get people calling in, talking in during some of the things. Um, so well, they just, they just might want to be able to watch it live. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts about the town meeting referendum? Encourage people to vote. Um, so next is Friends of Cor uh, Cornwall. Um, a uh, flyer was sent out uh, by an anonymous group 
uh, last Saturday ahead of the Zoom meeting, um, signed by the Friends of Cornwall. Uh, then I uh, did some calling as my phone was ringing off the hook as far as uh, who was, uh, who, uh, who were the Friends of Cornwall as people were concerned about some of the information in, in the package and, and especially about the anonymity of, of such a mailing. Uh, it encouraged an, a no vote, uh, has a website and people also reported getting uh, emails about it. Um, and I think their question of the people of Cornwall is who are the friends of Cornwall? Um, there was no attribution or person listed on the flyer. It was anonymous. So I did a little research on Monday. I talked to the um, postmaster in West Cornwall as it listed a, on the flyer a return address of um, West Cornwall 6796. There is, that is not a real postal address. Um, there's no box number, there's no street address. Um, the postmaster reported that over 1,500 pieces of mail were delivered to Cornwall post offices by a out of town printing company for distribution in the post offices, which was consistent with what I heard of people getting flyers. Um, because there was no attribution, I did, um, and this was a major um, development, I did consult with the town's bond council who referred me to the state election commission, who also said consult the town attorney. Uh, so I had uh, some interesting conversations as far as what are the laws, as far as putting out uh, information, especially flyers, expending money to influence a town vote. And there is a lot of state statute and law about how this is done properly and how it has to be done in order to be done legally. Um, I got a letter back um, quoting the statutes from the state um, election commission um, officer uh, who was very, very good, very balanced. Um, that's why he's there uh, to oversee, to make sure our elections or town votes are done fairly, properly. Uh, and what he said was that the state and these matters are not the content police. They are not gonna say, you can't say this or you should say that. What they are very strict about is saying that if you put out political messages, you have to have attribution. You can't influence an election or a vote anonymously. Um, town attorney Pearly Grimes has confirmed this. And again, uh, this is not a matter of um, being for or against a resolution or a referendum, it's a question of how do you influence the vote? How do people have an equal say in town affairs? We do expect, as is our history, for issues to be debated um, very thoroughly. Uh, we expect people to not always agree, um, but we also expect people to do things the way they're supposed to do things. And the public overall, the standard is the public business should be done in the public eye. Uh, this town attorney uh, wrote me a letter today, which I will read um, both this letter and the letter I got from the state. Election commission is available by request tomorrow at our office. We can send an email of it, copy of it. Because again, we try to do things openly and let everybody know uh, what the rules are and, and what's supposed to happen. Um, so anyway, this will take a while. I'm going to, I'm going to summarize and I can read everything because there's a lot of um, statutory references. So where he quotes statutory certain numbers, which go on quite a long ways, I'm just going to say Connecticut general statutes without saying exactly which one, but if anybody um, wants to find out which ones we're talking about, uh, these letters, are available. Again, the town does have attorney client privilege. When we're dealing with matters of litigation, they're exempt from free information. But 
I think this is a very pertinent issue, a very important issue, and of course, a very timely issue as the town is about to make a very important decision, mm -hmm. a very um, um, expensive decision. And so people should know as much, and we will do as much as we can to tell you what is going on, not just about the issue, but about the process and what the, pro the, the important process of how these towns are supposed to make decisions. Uh, so this is from Attorney Grimes. Uh, Dear Gordon, you forward me to review and advise a flyer from an organization identifying itself as, quote, the Friends of Cornwall. Um, it looks like Jonathan may be putting this up. Uh, the flyer argues for no vote on the referendum scheduled for July 9th, 2022. It's my understanding that uh, 1,500 flyers were left for the West Cornwall Postmaster and have been mailed to Cornwall residents. A copy of the flyer for the Friends of Cornwall is attached for information and review. This flyer is anonymous. The individuals who prepared it are nowhere identified, nor is the name or address of their agent. Further, it's my understanding that the same group sent out that sent out the flyer appears to have set up a website and to have sent email blasts to various residents. In none of these communications does the group disclose their identity or that of their agents. It seems likely that the flyer, website, and email marketing, um, the Friends of Cornwall spent in excess of $1,000 on their efforts in opposition, opposition to the referendum. No such group is registered as a political committee with the town of Cornwall nor certified as exempt from such registration. Assuming that the Friends of Cornwall consist of more than one individual, it's my opinion that this group, by its activities in opposition to this referendum, appears to have violated at least two provisions of the Connecticut General Statutes. And the first apparent violation is of the printed communication disclaimer requirements in the Connecticut General Statute, which requires groups of two or more individuals to produce a printed communication in opposition to a referendum to include on it a disclaimer with the words paid for followed by the name of the group and the name of the address of the agent. The Friends Flyer having no such disclaimer appears to have violated this provision. Second apparent violation of this political group registration requirements. If a group spends more than $1,000 to influence a referendum, Connecticut General Statutes requires them to register with the town clerk as a political committee. Such a political committee in turn is required by section, another section of the Connecticut General Statutes to file with the clerk detailed financial identifying information and periodic disclosure statements. If a group spends uh, less than $1,000 to oppose a referendum, other st uh, state statute uh, may require them to file a certification with the town clerk. The friends certainly violate the registration requirement if they spent more than a thousand dollars. They may also have done so if they spent less than a thousand dollars on it. Regarding the uh, enforcement procedures upon notification by the town clerk of a potential chapter 155 violation, the state election enforcement commission is charged with investigating the case and imposing appropriate penalties of uh, the Connecticut General Statute uh, specifies that the town clerk shall notify the State Election Enforcement Commission of such violation of which the town clerk may have knowledge. Therefore, once the town clerk has knowledge of any violation, she has an obligation to report to the State Election Enforcement Commission. After receiving such notification, the commission has full investigative authority, including if necessary, subpoena power. Regarding potential penalties, uh, the statute provide the penalties for violation um, shall be a fine of not less than $200 or more than $2,000 or imprisonment for not more than a year or both. Violation section could result in more serious penalty. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you or other members of the board selectmen have in regarding this letter. So uh, having read this and uh, reach this conclusion of the Pearly Grimes, the town attorney and the town clerk are in the process of drafting a complaint uh, circulating around this fly, uh, flyer with the state election commission. Because again, the important um, phrase in Pearly's letter is that she, she 
she shall report these violations. She doesn't have an option. Um, if she feels something is this, it's up to the state to investigate it. They have plenty of people that are used to this. They know all these different statutes and they will be the ones to uh, develop a case or not. So um, that is, I think, where that sits um, at this point. Um, from people I'm hearing uh, emails from the Friends of Cornwall still continue today, uh, anonymous and unregistered. Um, by contrast, there is information on the referendum on the town website. Uh, the process that's been undertaken in the last six years has been uh, open to the public uh, and recorded of uh, years of public meetings. And again, it's um, fine to disagree and dissent, but there are certain uh, rules and that have to be followed as far as how these things work. And again, uh, the town clerk is uh, following what the law uh, says she shall do. So again, it's my hope that this, this episode does not distract from the merits or the discussion about the issue at hand, which is really is, should the town uh, put in this system in West Cornwall? Um, that's really the nutshell of what we'll be focusing on in the town meeting. Uh, this matter with the state won't be adjudicated until after, well, after the vote. Um, but um, again, that process will be undertaken. It is being undertaken. So, um, and our board hasn't discussed this, so we can discuss it in real um, real time. And again, thanks to uh, town attorney and the town clerk who worked over the weekend trying to find out what the laws are and what, a proper, what an appropriate response is to the town to this unprecedented effort to influence uh, a town vote in ways that may be improper. So any questions from the board, any comments? Uh, there's not much that this board has to do other than encourage the town attorney to support the town clerk um, because it's up to her to oversee the actual administration of, of the elections. Yes, Janet. So um, it's, it's interesting that someone's risking prison and possible fines um, to you know, ask their question you know, as opposed to just asking questions and getting their uh, correct information. I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, there are questions being asked. I'm, I'm puzzled why anybody would just not come forward and say, hey, th these are the questions I have. But I'm wondering if there are new questions that are being raised, might we be able to put together an FAQ to answer those questions? And hopefully this will answer these, you know, the person or person's questions and they won't feel that they need to do it anonymously, let's do it productively because people may have, I mean, if there's questions, let's answer the questions, but make sure that correct information is given to everyone. And I'm wondering if that's a, an opportunity that we, we might have. Uh, I can bring that up with our advisors. I know part of the frustrating thing is that the town has followed what the rules are in order for the town to um, put things out, we have to be fairly neutral and factual. And the three page flyer that we put out was approved by the state. So we cannot put out a flyer saying vote yes. Um, and we haven't done that. We haven't told people how to vote. We try to tell people what our, what the project is about. Uh, but again, I believe anything that the town puts out has to be approved by the state. And again, we're up against a fairly tight timeline. Um, I believe I have also been in touch with uh, Todd Piker, who's chair of the committee, and Steve McDonald, the engineer, and a lot of the issues that have been raised in these flyers and emails have been um, discussed and rehashed over the years in the committee setting, so they have the answers. Uh, what we can it do... It feels like a flyer might be helpful, Gordon, just because... But, you know, I mean, I, I realize it's been hashed over years and people might not have that information at their fingertips. And if we could at least provide the answers to the questions, I think that would be helpful. That would be helpful. But again, we have to follow the law and everything we've said in our sequence, we took several weeks to get our information approved by the state. And I'm not sure we have time to do all that. 
plus the town cannot spend, you know, there's, con there's constraints now with what, with our response from when I talked to um, the state election people. I said the town cannot spend uh, funds influencing the vote either. So what the best thing to do is for people to attend the town meeting. Uh, they certainly can write letters to the paper. They can discuss things that don't cost the town money, mm -hmm. but there are limits to how much the town can do as far as the actual putting out a flyer. Okay, well, if we can put together an FAQ and that's allowed, I would volunteer my time to, to, to write that. I have no problem with that. The questions and answers that, that could be approved, I'm happy yeah. to volunteer my time. Yeah, I think Todd is, Todd is working on something. Okay. So. Okay, well, I'll stand by. If um, Todd needs assistance, please have him reach out to me. I'm happy to volunteer. Okay, thank you. I'm a fast typer. <laughs> Sure, you're much faster than I. Um, any other comments, thoughts? Um, so, anyway, that's where that stands at the current time. I hope that um, gives people some information in which to evaluate this issue. So, uh, so from there, if there's not anything else from the board, uh, we'll go on to our transportation update renter update uh upgrades uh we're getting close our goal is to um transfer into the new facility on july 1st soft target a um, couple more things need to be done i've asked josh tyson for an estimate on the water place in the water line part of one of the things that wasn't quite up to standard was the uh, water line and phone system that was, internet system that was underground. Uh, Josh is gonna look at trying to replace that and uh, with a more reliable water system. So we'll be awaiting that. Uh, second thing is that we did get a quote, which I think I forwarded on to um, the board from John Bevins, who um, gave us a quote of $775 to install a um, audio link, basically a, um, a Wi-Fi um, signal from the town garage across the brook to the transfer station. So that would eliminate the, the need for cable, which goes underground and is subject to um, the freeze and thaw of New England. So I think those systems work well. Um, so I would make a motion that we uh, accept John Bevins' proposal to upgrade our uh, video or our internet ca capacity and phone capacity and transfer station with a, a signal beamed from the town garage. So is there a second to that for, for then we can discuss? I'll second that, sounds like a good idea. Uh, any discussion? Um, I'm coming, you, I'm coming to you from a similar video link, audio link, through the bushes, through the fields, 2,000 feet. So we have a much shorter distance to span uh, than I do from Town Street. And we have four different video outlets available to us through our signal. So again, uh, I think this would work well down there. It's more reliable than things that run through bushes and underground. So. Um, any further discussion on John Bevins' proposal? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, anything else transfer station wise? Ted, I see Ted and Willer here. Welcome, gentlemen. Any other updates? Uh, that's about it. We just got a small punch list there to go through with Jim. And when he's available, we'll do that. So, uh, other than that, I think we're. Ready to go, we wanna move in. <laughs> Great. Yeah, the space looks really good. I really like the way it's it's well lit. You've got much better visibility, uh, safer layout than the old days. Um, I think it's it's come out really well. And again, thanks to the work group that put the design together, Lisa, Jim, you guys. Um, I think it's a good, good upgrade. Um, we'll have a, uh, 
quiet celebration at some point or open house or do something. I know it's busy, so I don't want to put him any more on the plate than necessary, but I think we're getting pretty close to that point. Um, okay, anything else on that? Uh, okay, next, uh, next thing is we're also renovating the town office uh, building, doing new siding. Uh, we opened up the siding of the building, which was pretty deteriorated. Um, I think a lot of those, a lot of that had been there since the 1940s. Um, it had a very fairly unique uh, construction system uh, of lath and cardboard on homeless oak. Uh, and so one thing we've been doing on the part we've done so far is also the blowing insulation. So that part of the building will have insulation for the first time. And I'm pretty happy with the uh, shingles. These are painted shingles instead of the unpainted shingles and stained shingles that can really warp and move and stuff. And so I asked Jim to come up with a, a price. Originally, we just can do the worst part, but it seemed like if we're doing it, um, let's do the whole building. A lot of it's sort of weather beaten. Uh, as Vera does point out, it's the first place a lot of people see in town uh, before they go to the transfer station or the town beach. And it is, it is in need of a, a renovation upgrade. I think this would look good. We're gonna paint the trim on it and then regrade the parking lot, try to get some of the water away from the building. We're gonna repave that and then establish new uh, flower beds and stuff. So I think the, the, little, the little building will look you know, much better than it has. Uh, in order to get all the way around the building, uh, Jim has worked up an estimate of, of $36,000. That also does take into account, they had to replace uh, the sills and do quite a bit of uh, repair due to the rot around the, the vault area, uh, which we don't anticipate it being an issue as much in the new, the newer parts. So I'd make a motion. We do have money, ahead, you know, to do this. I'd make a mo, and then at that point, because we got a new furnace, um, we have insulated now the entire building. Um, hopefully that's, you know, really in good shape. So again, we're working our way through our facilities. So I think it would make sense for, and then this generation will not have to worry about the shingles. Um, it should be a long time fix for the siding. Uh, we put, um, it's like a composite wood on the bottom for a splashboard. So where the shingles interact with the uh, soil, it should be much better than what was there before. So I'd make a motion that we accept Jim's um, bid of $36,000 to finish the job of insulating, uh, painting the trim and doing the shingles around the rest of the town office. Is there a second to that idea? I'll second it. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to see the old construction, which is will be covered up by the new shingles, um, there's, a, there's a picture of it on the website. It's sort of unique. Um, certainly um, our frugal uh, predecessors uh, expenditures have been well paid for in the 80 years that has been there, but it, I think it's good, good to update it to the 21st century. So any other thoughts? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, so it'll be, it's really good to be able to, you know, get the transfer station and the town offices upgraded during this construction season where I know there has been supply, supply problems and other things, but um, it's good to see that that happen. And there's been an outreach to people to do some volunteer expert landscaping around the building, make it look better. Um, I have been, uh, when time permits, doing a little um, research on electric vehicles, talking to people in town that have uh, various electric vehicles. The big issue is between the quick chargers, um, which are fairly expensive to install and the slow chargers, which are basically what people have in their houses, uh, which are basically take six to eight hours to charge your cars up. Uh, the travelers, of course, would like a, a quick charger, um, more than the slow charger. Uh, so 
anyway, that's about as far as I've gotten, other than I've got a pretty good um, group of people to talk to that have actually worked in the field of electric charging stations. And we would, there is the Eversource grant proposal out there, and we will be following up on that uh, with the goal of having a charging station at some of some type in, in all three villages, if not more places. So anyway, that's still ways to go on that, but again, got a couple of good leads, couple of good programs out there and a couple of town residents that are familiar with the um, ins and outs of electric vehicle charging. There's things also to do considerations of power charges, demand charges on your electric bill, because if all of a sudden you have, you know, one of these high voltage chargers and you start using a lot of power in a short period of time, that may set your rate for the month, which is not what you really want to do. So, I mean, again, there's there's our franchises that can run these. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, um, but uh, some care needs to be given to um, to this whole thing. But I'm so confident we'll get some of these in place by year's end. Um, Electric Town Green um, got a proposal from the um, Cornell Village Improvement Society to actually bring electricity to Town Green. Uh, there are more events there. Um, and the court, the uh, court across Pine Street has again worked for 80 years, but it might be time to do a little bit of an upgrade there. And uh, we do have some uh, town money that we can put into it. I don't think it'd be a major expense, but as there is a couple of concerts scheduled for the summer on the Town Green, and we have the Ag Fair coming up and there's other things in the fall. Um, I think we will work on some proposal. Um, there's a poll on uh, Bolton Hill Road that hopefully we can tap into. So I'm gonna work with the village improvement and a local electrician, see if we can get some prices on getting some power to the green. Uh, again, hopefully by the Ag Fair, if not by one of the concerts. So just give you a heads up, another little project out there, side project. Um, another issue is tax refund. We have two, I believe, John. Um, one is real estate overpayment. We do appreciate people's uh, donations, but we are not. We will be glad to get them back if you make a mistake. Um, so there's one for what, what, just tell me the quantities, John. We don't have to tell the people, but there's one, one real estate and one, um, motor vehicle and again the real estate is an overpayment so we paid twice and the car thing is for somebody i believe sold the car they get a refund yeah, the the uh the duplicate payment on real estate is uh eight hundred three dollars 78 cents and the overpayment on motor vehicles is twelve dollars and 46 cents okay <clears throat> so taxpayers, please hear that we we have finished we are finishing the fiscal year on June 30th with more than $12 in the kitty. So we should be able to swing these refunds without any problem. Um, Barbara will have a full accounting of our finances shortly. So I make a motion that we adopt these um, recommendation of our Excellent tax collector, Gene, for two refunds. Is there a second? Second. Second, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, great. Um, so now we're into additions. I had my two, which is we are, uh, we are in receipt of a um, of a um, request from our hardworking agricultural commission to get a grant for a thousand dollars out of the town's bottle resources uh, to help them finance a, a uh, the agricultural fair which is coming up in September. Um, I think this is a worthy cause. Thanks. For the Agricultural Commission and the Park and Recreation Commission. I meant to have this as an agenda item saying, but I'll digress shortly. 
of how much fun the party at the town beach was. The Ag Commission gave everybody free ice cream and the park and rec put on uh, cooked up food and there was some potluck, uh, some music. It was just a wonderful night down there. And uh, I think um, the estimate I got was almost 40 kids in the water at the same time, a few chattering teeth, but they're all having a great time. And again, thanks to Roxanna Hammond for her generosity over 30 years ago to give the town a place to swim together, uh, have a little uh, dinner together. And uh, really, I think everybody's spirits were uplifted who went there. And hopefully we'll have some more events there in the summer, but it was a very wonderful event. Uh, but back to our agenda item, which is I'll make a motion to grant the Agricultural Commission $1,000 out of the return of our returnable bottles um, fund to help finance the Ag Fair. There's a second. 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 Discussion. Uh, what's the balance in that fund? Um, I believe it is. I, believe there is not much in the fund, but from my understanding, we have a um, surplus of returnables ready to go any day. So we should be building that up um, starting this week. So it goes it goes down to pretty low amount and then we build it back up. So I think we're under a thousand dollars at this point, but we we should be on track to get them or a thousand dollars by fair time. I can give you a exact number tomorrow if you want. Sure. Okay. Any other discussion, questions? Jordan, so if, yeah. we, if we vote now to give them $1,000 and we don't have $1,000, what happens then? Uh, they get what we have. Um, <laughs> I, I, I assume so, but- We don't go over budget for that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll work something out. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, obviously, I mean, I, yeah, they have some money in their budget, so we'll make sure we have a good fare. So we'll okay. work it out. Okay. We can. Um, we'll get you some numbers, and get numbers to Bill, uh, to make sure we're well funded. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, next, I had was an update. Um, Did you you had a motion? Oh, that, I didn't read a vote on that. Okay, so all those in favor of the thousand dollars to the Ag Committee? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Good. All right, so next I had uh, an update from Optimal Altis. They have uh, been in touch with Paul Prindle about um, pulling permits to put in two cabinets for fiber optic cable in the town of Cornwall. So that is their requirement before they have to, before they can strain um, fiber optic cable. So a day that a lot of people thought would never come is fast approaching. Um, I do have a outstanding letter to them of eight questions about their installation plans, about such things as coverage for people with long driveways, uh, about pricing, and things that we have not gotten a light speed answer to those questions. Um, but the letter pending, and again, uh, got a couple people helping me, advise me on that. Um, so we're we're on it, but at least like said, there, there is forward motion on it. Uh, and what's interesting is they are also having to maintain their cable system while they spring their fiber. Uh, so we will have that. And apparently in other towns, there have been noises from some of the other carriers stringing towns. So there may even be some competition in this um, often forgotten part of the world all of a sudden. So anyway, um, there is positive news on, on the uh, fiber optic front. So I'll keep you informed the best I can. Uh, Janet, you have a healthcare update. Oh, I yeah. Have, I'm sorry, I just have one more quick question. So, what's what is their timing to pulling the switch on on having this done? Um, that's one of my eight questions. So, haven't gotten the endpoint yet. Okay. Uh, the word the word earlier was to string the town this year. 
the question is, what does that mean? I mean, does that right. mean they're bringing to the roadside or is that going down? Um, does that include all the epic driveways we have in town? Um, I believe they're probably going to go where their cable goes. Another big question is, will they send it up conduits? If there's existing conduits, will they wire conduits? Don't know. But again, we're trying to get answers on some of the things, but getting, again, getting the cabinets um, is the first step. Could you share those, the questions and answers, the eight questions and answers, please, when you receive those? Uh, I can see the eight questions. Sure. sure. Okay, thank you. Anything else on Optimum Altis Fiber? Okay, so next we have public comment. Uh, actually, the healthcare update. Oh, healthcare. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so there's a little bit of a change to the schedule just for summer. Um, this week, there is not going to be mobile service for healthcare in town. So just a heads up um, for the week of uh, June 22nd, there's not going to be, or June, sorry, June, yeah, June 20th, there's not going to be service in town on this Wednesday. Um, Next, starting next week, um, the hours will be on Thursday from 9 to 11. And I do have updated flyers that I'll be putting around town. And I've posted it on the Cornwall Community Network, um, on our town Facebook, and um, on my Facebook page as well. And I'll, if there's any other places I need to put it, then Gordon, let me know. But these flyers will be going out also. Great. Yep. There's a one posted on the door too, um, right out, um, right outside the union. So if anybody does come over, there's a note that just reminds them that there's not going to be service this week, and then service will change next week. It's been very, it's been nice and busy, by the way. Great. No, it's a wonderful service to have in town. Great. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Priscilla. Yes, yeah, so I just had one thing I wanted to add. I wanted to thank Richard Briggs. He does all the videoing and the Cornwall Association every year has been giving Peter Demi and I have been doing it for years, uh, a flag, a Cornwall flag and a Cornwall book to the graduating class at CCS. And this year, for the first time, I thought to ask Richard to video it. And I have never had so many people come up to me after the fact, many of them parents of those youngsters. They were thrilled to see it. So thank you, Richard, once again, for all you do in Cornwall. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, again, thank you, Richard, for keeping us in video. And again, it was a great event at the school. Uh, a lot of um, great um, young people there and getting a good experience at this local school. Okay, thank you, Priscilla. Peter, anything else? Michelle, public comment? Yes. Hi, Gordon. Thanks. Hello. Um, and uh, Park and Rec has some more fun events planned, as you mentioned, some music on the green. So I just wanted to give everybody a chance to mark your calendars. Um, the next big event is July 1st, music on the green. We're having the Zola Boys, which is a bluegrass band out of Torrington, will be coming up to play. It's from six to eight. It'd be a great way that happens to be Lime Rock's Night of Fireworks. So come start your 4th of July celebrations on the green. We're gonna have Hot Z's food truck and then also an ice cream truck. We have some games and activities planned. It'll be a great family fun night. So we hope to see everybody for music on the green. Um, and then a little smaller event happening next week, our um, senior breakfast. So that's Tuesday. Um, 9 a.m. at Foot Field. If you'd like to attend, you don't have to be a senior. You're welcome, um, no matter your age. Come on out and have um, just a little continental breakfast with us. If you want to come, please um, RSVP by Friday to prcornwall at gmail.com or Jen Marco, if you have her address, the email address in your thing, um, and just let us know that you're coming. Just come for a little start your day off. All right, thanks, Gordon. Thank you, Michelle. It's, I think it's really important that people are getting back together and having all these events. So, 
It's really good. And, and thank you all for spending your time. Oh, me. you're welcome. I also just to mark your calendar. We have our August event. August 12th will be a Friday night, also six to eight. Um, Wanda Houston and the HBH band, and we'll be having some food and other things for that. So mark your calendars for August 12th. What time is that, Michelle? Six to eight. Six to eight. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comments from the public? You can raise your hand. Again, you have to identify yourself a little bit in this age of non-anonymity. Um, or not. Um, I think I see Richard Schlesinger raising his hand. Sorry, I just had to figure out how to unmute. Just picking up on what uh, Priscilla said about Richard. Uh, Priscilla and I were both on the uh, Cornwall Association when, frankly, I stole Richard's idea to make the Cornwall flag that we now give to the uh, graduating class. And so uh, I'd just like to second uh, Priscilla's uh, comment about Richard and take a small amount of credit for stealing his idea for <laughs> having a flag con uh, 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 competition, which was so successful. So once again, another shout out to Richard Griggs. Okay, thank who you, Richard. Is, who is actually a true friend of Cornwall, who doesn't mind saying that he's a friend of Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. You really know how to get to a guy. <laughs> Thank you all. All right. I'm not gonna give up. <laughs> okay. A self-identifying friend of Cornwall. There you go. <laughs> All right, any other comments? All right, hearing none, we'll see you on Saturday night at the town meeting. I'm sure there'll be some comments there. So thank you all for attending and doing your part. And spread the Take word care. if people want to watch this. It'll be on the website within an hour. So. Okay, there you go. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye-bye.